All right. Uh, good day, everyone. Welcome to the channel. It's Sylvain here again. Uh, today with me, I've got uh, Julio Linares uh, joining me from um, Germany. So we're glad to have him on uh, on board again on this channel. I'll try to cover you know, crypto, Bitcoin and etc. from a different perspective, bring different analysis, how uh, we can see it uh, beside, you know, just the, the trading and uh, aspect of it and uh, you know number go up uh, type deal so let's try to how can it uh, better our lives uh, as a whole right so um, first off uh, thanks uh, Julio for coming on the, on the show uh, to start off can you uh, have a short introduction of yourself yeah thank you for having me Sylvain um, so my name is Julio Dinares I'm originally from Guatemala uh, I'm an economic anthropologist uh, and I am the community and research coordinator for the Circles project here in Berlin. Uh, Circles is a community based income currency system uh, that runs on the XDAI sidechain uh, blockchain. And yeah, we've launched since October uh, last year. Uh, and since then, we've been basically organizing the local economy here in Berlin with many different partners. Awesome, thanks. Yeah, so circles. I discovered that uh, that recently with uh, you know universal basic income. Obviously, this was a topic uh, you know topic that comes up uh, from time to time with the new economy and so on. Especially uh, coming from uh, what happened, like the the events of, of last year, right? So um, how uh, so what what is circles really? So can you explain that a bit more? Like what uh, actually is circles? Uh, yeah. So circles, um, one way to look at it um, from a more uh, general perspective would be a, as a protocol, so a system, in the sense that um, in the circle system, um, to, to enter and to start issuing your own money, uh, you need people to trust you. So essentially, when you join uh, you make an account, it tells you you need three people who are already in the system to trust you, so, so you can start issuing uh, this basic income, right? Um, and so once you have that, uh, once you get people to trust you, you start to issue circles at a rate of eight circles a day. So that's one of the parameters within this protocol is that every day everybody issues eight circles. Uh, it doesn't matter if you join at the beginning or at the end, it's always uh, sort of an equal share of the monetary mass is always uh, produced uh, at this rate. So it's about 240 a month. And um, it's also important that uh, the trust element is, is very important because it is basically a way of, uh, yeah, uh, claiming power, let's say, over over resources, uh, over uh, the relationships, really, that, 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 that Circles uh, tokens uh, claim. So uh, everybody in the Circle system, basically, uh, from a more technical perspective, issues their own ERC-20 token. So that means that there is no not one circle uh, currency, but every but it's a kind of like a plurality uh, or multiplicity of currencies of circles tokens. Um, so, for example, Sylvain, you if you join to put it very bluntly, you'll have a Sylvain coin or a Sylvain CRC uh, Sylvain circle, and I'll have a, a fully one. And then, uh, if I want to make a payment to somebody you know, Sylvain, where you are, I could uh, send like I when I make the payment, what happens in the back end? is that uh, if there is no direct trust connection, you, you may trust this friend of yours over there. I don't know them, um, but I'm going to make a payment to you, Sylvain. My circle tokens go to you, and then your circle tokens go to your friend. So in the balance of trade, you have a plus five and minus five, so to say. If I give you five circles for a coffee and a sandwich, uh, yeah. right? uh, but you, you are neutral. Right, uh, you get five circles and you give five circles away. So it's this idea that you know it's, it's based on the notion that um, money is really a form of debt, a form of a set of relationships uh, of what we owe to each other, uh, and the circle system is trying to portray that in practice by creating a, a credit money system whereby people can claim resources from each other and then build enough um, economic power so that people can actually claim a basic income. 
Okay, nice. So can can people actually use it? Uh, can use circles? Like, is there like a, let's call it like, I know a good dollar, I think is a marketplace. So is there a marketplace uh, or uh, local communities? Maybe they, they, they sell uh, uh, products amongst themselves. Like, how does that uh, work? Yeah, yeah, so for example, right now in Berlin, where we're focusing on the moment, uh, we have many communities that are starting to use circles. You have to like sell uh, things like clothes or food. Uh, but it's a very nice uh, small company here that um, basically creates uh, food products, uh, like very, very tasty food products out of uh, salvaged food. So food that is normally not sold at a supermarket because it doesn't uh, reach the standards and so on. So all this food normally goes to waste. So what they do is that they try to create a circle by like using the, you know, this food and then making their products with it. And so they are like uh, selling their products for circles, uh, but also teaching people how to make this, uh, these products. You know? So it's also, it's not just the money system, but also the logic of trying to like create more uh, circular economies. Um, yeah, at the moment we are working on a, on a digital marketplace as well. Uh, so that people anywhere, not just in Berlin, can, can like offer stuff and then also claim stuff. So ideally in the future, you have people like giving out lessons online for, you know, language or yoga or whatever it is that you can actually buy and sell online um, without physical movement, right, uh, yeah. of, of resources. And you can actually pay in circles. But physically speaking, uh, circles is a local system. So it's accessible anywhere in the, in the globe, in the planet, but it only works locally for stuff like, like food no or like or services that you can only get uh uh on the physical uh material forms let's say <laughs> okay yeah 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 so it's more like it's got a community uh focused uh, element of it and uh, by um having a look at uh, obviously uh, so it's on telegram that's where the most of the discussion happens uh, i think there's no, another uh chat like a developer chat uh, going on as well and um and then yeah, so there's there are different communities, right? Because you you go in the pin message, they have different uh, locations, right? So anyone uh, could join circles uh, and then somewhat start their own like local community, unless it's already started, correct? Yes, exactly. So, um, well, it is only one protocol for now. Uh, so long as uh, people can find other people to, to trust them and their friends, they can start to create their own local circle, right? So what we've started to do is to organize international assemblies and also trust parties every once in a while so that people from all over the internet uh, know when to look for trust because often uh, what, what, we, what we found is that, you know, when people uh, join circles, the first thing the, the, the app prompts them to do is to say, okay, you need people to trust you. And then, people start to put their profiles up on Twitter or in Telegram and so on. And this is not really a social way of, of building trust because, I mean, some people do it and it's fine. Of course, it depends on the person, but uh, we try to like facilitate more social ways in which people can actually meet and trust each other and know who is where and what they're up to, you know? So through this process, we're getting to know people in China, um, in Croatia, in Costa Rica, in Belgium, in many different parts of, of the world, uh, trying to join circles and trying to use it uh, in their own like very, very contextual places. So it's really, really early stages. Uh, and yeah, we're really excited to see like how people will take these tools and, and embed them in their own reality. Yeah, exactly. And, and you mentioned that about, uh, about uh, the trusting uh, part, you know, you need three people uh, to trust your, uh, your account somehow, like uh, to, uh, to be able to participate into the, you know, you get your eight circles a day, uh, like, yeah, like you mentioned. And yeah, you, you see a lot of, because I'm following the, the telegram, you see always people putting their, their links and so on. Um, so you've, you've got events in place, right, to, to accommodate people actually, you know, going on a video, plugging the mic, and then, you know, talk to other people, correct? Yeah, exactly. And to share uh, their experiences. And also in the assemblies, for example, like once we had a, a friend from Tampa talking about how he would like to use circles there because there's a lot of homelessness and inequality in Florida. And he wanted to figure out a way in which to use circles in his local area. Uh, to like get maybe uh, motels, hostels, hotels to accept circles to allow people to stay there at night, for example, right? 
Um, or we also had people, I don't know, coming from Myanmar and saying, hey, you know, there is this big uh, lack of cash, uh, lack of means of exchange going on, and how can we organize our own local money system there, uh, given the context? Uh, or just maybe groups of people who just want to organize their own care circles. So it's already very, very tight in the communities. They want to use circles for a very specific uh, thing like sharing uh, care work. Like you take care of my kids one day, I take care of your kids the other day, uh, and so on and so forth. So it's very interesting, like all the creative ways in which people have been using it. And, and trust is a very important element. And that's also why it's kind of going against the grain in most of the crypto uh, world, because uh, most of crypto, as you know, are, is uh, actually digital assets. It's not really uh, a monetary system in the sense of like an IOU. It's more like I have a, uh, an asset and it goes up or goes down and I can like, uh, you know, uh, make investments with it. With circles, it's really yeah. about like claiming resources, real resources. Uh, and that, of course, requires a, a completely different imagination and logic. And the web of trust, which is this kind of technical name for um the the trust system uh it's a really useful tool because eventually you could have local supply chains where people know and trust the producers and where the things come from uh yep. and so maybe you don't know the producer but somebody you trust knows them and they you know and yeah, so you, yeah. we could eventually embed this in the app uh as people actually saying okay i trust this uh, because i know where it comes from and i know my friend right uh supposed to today where you're kind of just forced to uh, eat what is in the supermarket and you're just giving a label and you don't know if the label is saying the truth or not and so on. So uh, it's kind of like a bottom-up way of creating this uh, economies, more democratic economies. Yeah, yeah. so we can create more than, than like, you, yeah, like you mentioned, just holding a, a, an asset and um, <clears throat> kind of hold on to it for, for dear life, like they, <laughs> they say with the price hikes and uh, dips and everything. Uh, it, it can create like something locally where, you know, besides just the, the crypto or buying or selling stuff, you could like, like you mentioned, like um, do a babysitting for somebody else, uh, do their grass or something, and then they do it in exchange. So it, it can create like a, a some kind of a, a local community uh, effect on, on that with different services, right? So helping someone that... Uh, I don't know, uh, to do some renovation on their house, I guess, and all that, that stuff, right? So yeah, that's... And, and also, uh, uh, not just care work, which is very important, but also let's talk about uh, food. So as I was saying, like in Berlin, in, in, in the Brandenburg area, we're working now with some farmers to um, support them in also embedding more cooperative distribution alternatives. So what often happens with small farms is that they have to... Uh, internalize the cost of distribution. So the, the cost of the food rises, the price of food rises because all these small farmers not only have to do the gardening and the business uh, and all the, but also the logistics. And so uh, when we go to them and we say, hey, can we give some of your veggies or your food for circles? They're like, okay, great, but what can I spend it on? And we're like, okay, you can spend it on this logistics alternative, right? So it's really about trying to make it useful for them. It's like about connecting needs and resources uh, and really trying to uh, relocalize existing supply chains to empower uh, local producers. Yeah, so right now it's mostly, uh, so you say around Berlin, right? So the, it's probably the mostly developed in, the, in that area. Are there any other locations where, you know, the, there's good solid foundation on the, on the project? Or is it still uh, in process of being built and so on? I think many, yeah, it's 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 quite early, as I said. I know that at the very beginning, uh, people in China started like already trading food uh, for circles, which was really encouraging. Um, I know that uh, in Indonesia, there is a team there trying to like build up a local economy as well. Um, yeah, I think I think like you also have people in Croatia, in Belgium as well, doing meetups, starting to like get to feel it and know it and use it. Um, yeah, so it's still quite early days, but it's really about like, yeah, getting the tools out there, getting the knowledge out there. Like, it's really also an educational process because money uh, is something we're not taught about in school. At least I wasn't in high school. Nobody told me I had to, like, go to work after I graduated, you know, uh, yeah. and so on. So I think it's also kind of like I mean, always a, a big thing for people who've never learned or heard about alternative money systems uh, to, learn, to take them on and then use them right where they are. It's a... It's a <laughs> 
it's not common knowledge, so to say. And we want to make it a common knowledge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And it could be uh, a quick way to get some some people introduced uh, to it without you know risking uh, uh, too much as well, because you you're gonna get trusted and then get uh, the circles and really like on the market, right? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but they don't really have like a value attached to them at the moment, right? Yeah, so that's a very interesting question, right? Like I was, I was, I just uh, read a tweet from my friend Brett Scott, um, where he said something like, "You know, money is not a store of value because value uh, comes from people and and living ecosystems. Uh, mm -hmm. and so, while money can actually mediate uh, access to to value, it does not. It cannot really ever uh, store it, so to say. So." And um, as I mentioned at the beginning, because everybody in the system issues their own circles, it's very hard to put it in the market and have a price for it. So or, or because you would basically have to create a, a price for each of the individual personal currency, um, which is kind of hard to do. So from a design perspective, uh, we did it like this so people can use it more as a means of exchange. And then later, uh, we'll, we're thinking about introducing things like group currencies whereby people in the community can just like burn their personal currency and then make a group one. And then yep. these more broader uh, currencies could be put into a market to uh, get liquidity and access stuff outside of the resource network, right? So if I am getting my vegetables or my or going to the, to the restaurant or getting uh, some uh, a plumber or some service provider uh, in circles, that's fine, but maybe I, I need to access, I don't know, gasoline for my car uh, or something that I cannot claim within the circles network, we still need a way to access uh, other resources by using fiat money, right? So we're thinking about smart ways of creating that bridge uh, without commodifying our network. Uh, that yeah, sense. yeah, the bridge probably is still important at, at the moment because obviously most people use fiat money and yeah. uh, it, it's, it's a slow process of getting uh, people on board. And that, like you said, for store value, and you know that's always the ongoing debate with uh, BTC. You know, claiming that uh, it's a store of value, uh, just solely based on holding it in your in your wallet, which I find kind of silly in a way. Uh, what's your uh, what's your take? What's your opinion on uh, on that about that uh, narrative of BTC? You know, being like a store of value. Let's say. I mean, I think. Um... Bitcoin is, uh, as we said, a digital asset. Um, and like most assets, their uh, power or their, or their, yeah, their power comes from uh, basically how many people either hold it or, or trade it. So it's really about like um, people don't use it as, 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 as money, uh, meaning as you know, an IOU, uh, uh, a way of claiming resources, real resources, they use it more to uh, invest, you know? Um, speculation, I think, is something that happens in human societies. It's, it's sort of like one thing, something that we do as humans. Um, I think the issue with Bitcoin uh, and the Bitcoin ideology is that um, it teaches young generations of people uh, a very, very, like, regressive idea of what money is. So it's almost like going back to uh, some form of feudalism, whereby people are taught that gold coins are, are money and the best form of money because it's the pure metal and whatever. And then you assign all these uh, values in, into these uh, uh, tokens, um, which they cannot really hold. Uh, and I think that's, that's, that's a big issue because, because of the whole uh, hypes and downs and so on, it, it brings a lot of emotions within people and people start to like, create a relationship to it, they create a belief system with it, and then uh, it becomes real slowly, socially real. And so I think uh, um, for me, um, yeah, more than the store of value question, um, I would ask what is value, you know? Uh, <laughs> what, what, what is that value that we're trying to store? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so in fact, value would need to be attached to, uh, you know, like just from the principle of like getting it uh, used for something, right? Value, like, uh, especially like it's valuable if uh, you can leave your house, go to a store and use, let's say, BTC for, um, for payment, you know what I mean? But that's doesn't seem to be that way. I know value can take a whole lot of, you know, bigger like framework or it's like a bigger idea. 
but like, at the end of the day like can you use it you know like fiat money so i, I think that's i think that's the, that's that aspect that i i think is lacking at the moment so yeah what do you think about uh about that yeah it's an interesting question like i i come from guatemala i was born in guatemala but my family uh part of my family is uh my is my grand family from el salvador and as you know uh recently the president of el salvador made uh made legal made uh legal tender out of bitcoin uh and i think it's really problematic because you have a situation whereby uh you have a scarce digital asset uh who's distribution is really unequal in terms of the people who have a lot of it, the whales and those who don't have a lot of it. And so if you make that a, a legal tender for people to exchange uh, everyday goods and it's subjected to these high uh, uh, fluctuations in, in, in prices and so on, um, what you're going to do is you're just going to create more inequality or more weight, wealth uh, uh, like disparities between, between people and also in terms of access, you know. Like, how are people going to access Bitcoin uh, to pay for the local pupusas, for the local, uh, you know, tortillas and, and, and food and so on? Um, I think it's a, it's a question of, of the political economy uh, of, 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 of Bitcoin and also in general of crypto, which is something people don't often think about a lot. Um, like, I'm always, in, uh, I'm always a bit, uh, not annoyed. I mean, I think it's an interesting discussion, like, about DAOs and so on, about the social forms and ways of organizing alternatives outside of uh, the, whatever uh, things we use today, like nation states and so on. But my issue is always that um, even with something like Circles, uh, which is running on this exploit sidechain, is that uh, if a payment doesn't go through or if things are not like stable because of some library somewhere that broke uh, and that we have to contact the developers there and like sort of the human side to decentralization, um, it's really, if you're talking about a system, like a nationwide system, you need to be more serious about the systems that you're designing and creating because otherwise you're just going to cause a lot of human suffering. Yeah, I just want to yeah, talk about uh, what you just mentioned about uh, El Salvador and, uh, you know, obviously people that, you know, started back in 2010 that have a lot of uh, Bitcoin uh, in their possession if the economy if the world economy would be built on on that currency obviously some people would be like terribly rich you know like that would be like uh i think in, insane the amount of wealth they would have on that new economy and it would probably flick you know the switch on who's actually rich and who's not and uh, i don't know if that's um in that same way i don't know if that's why like some of the big venture companies are kind of jumping into that maybe to uh in case it does that then at least they, they retain uh some power as well but yeah it could definitely be a be an issue because people could afford a lot and then while others that uh, are just getting in to uh at that moment with a limited supply right then that would be problematic more than likely yeah yeah, I mean, it's like the, the crypto kings are trying to find a place to claim sovereignty, like to actually be able to, to have spaces in the world, like physical places in the world, whereby they can use their Bitcoins and their crypto assets uh, without having to go through the US and, and so on, right, uh, regulation. So I think it's a, it's, a, it's a very important geopolitical issue uh, because it will define a lot of the 21st century uh, in many important ways, I think. Yeah, and then I think a lot of uh, more regulations is probably coming. I think um, I would say um, you know big uh, bull markets tend to I think to bring that a lot of people on board the the projects. A lot of scams come through as well. Uh, you know, a lot of people trying to make uh, always quick quick money, right? So even though uh, there's tons of opportunities with crypto to make uh, make some kind of money, people trying to you know skip that and try to go go even faster by you know trying to join some scam that offer like a thousand percent uh apy you know and then next thing they know like they're let's say invested a thousand dollar and it's gone right boom to zero and then they're shocked and they wanted money back so it's uh i think that's that's bringing a lot more regulations that'd be interesting to see what uh what plays out we, we've heard about binance recently there's there's a lot of i i have that feeling at the moment it, a lot of stuff is brewing uh, in the background i think we uh, a lot more stuff is uh, is coming our way i think definitely i mean i think 
um, what we say with circles, you know, because we're trying to provide a, a distribution system for basic income. So like, you know, any municipality, any local government can come and say, we want to, we want our people to be able to issue a basic income. We want to issue a basic income uh, with the people here. Um, what sort of parameters do we need? You know, what sort of front end, what sort of uh, services do they need to be able to do that in a smooth way? And so that means also that we need to engage with local uh, regulators and educate them as well about the advantages of uh, getting out of the monoculture of the euro, uh, in the in the sense of here in the euro in the European Union in the eurozone, but uh, in other countries as well. It's like localizing economic relations via local currencies such as uh, circles, especially as a basic income, is a real uh, you know it's a real game changer. But you need to have proper regulatory frameworks that allow them to flourish. Uh, you can go the revolutionary route, which is also fine and, and welcome. But uh, you know you have to have a spectrum of responses depending on what you're doing. I think uh, the issue with uh, uh, Bitcoin and, and so on is that uh, because uh, money is a promise, uh, you know, it's debt, it's an IOU. I owe you this. I'm promising you that I'm going to give you this in return for that. No, there is a promise. Uh, sorry, uh, vibe to, to money, and so. When you have a system like Bitcoin, for example, or like just crypto in general with all these scams that you were mentioning, the promises that we make are often like inflated to the point where we cannot hold them. And that's also why we have an ecological crisis today, because you have financial systems that are just overshooting promises, you know, debt agreements, paperwork, and so on. And these promises that we cannot really uh, keep or, 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 or fulfill. Mm -hmm. And so from a very social perspective, it's like if you want to have a more ecological society, we need to really think hard and, and practice uh, giving promises to each other that we can actually uh, maintain and and also use to maintain life. Just to uh, quickly wrap up our uh, our interview. Uh, so if uh, if someone is watching this fairly new to uh, circles, what can they do? Where should they look at to uh, to know a bit more about uh, about circles and eventually get started with uh, with it? Yeah, so if you want to read about circles, uh, I would recommend you go either to our FAQ, so it's jointcircles.net uh, slash FAQ, or uh, check out our handbook, which is a sort of a practical and also, uh, yeah, um, like, a, like a manual, like a handbook to, 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 to learn how to organize your local economy where you are. Uh, so it's providing tools and so on, so it's, that's handbook.jointcircles.net. And then to make a wallet, is the, it's the garden. So... Uh, circles.garden you, you join and then you can start making your your account and then we have trust parties every every couple of weeks we also have assemblies uh on the last wednesday of every month so if anybody wants to join that and bring three of their friends two of their friends to together so they can be trusted and do circles where you are please feel more than welcome to do that um and then uh yeah uh, if you want to contact me also my email is julio at joincircles.net uh, I'm also on Twitter. You can follow me there and at Julio slash Lettuce. Uh, and yeah, thank you very much for your time. And yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. And uh, for everyone, for anyone watching, I'll have all the, the links in the description so you can have quick access to that. Just do the quick link, join the uh, either like create a wallet and so on. I'll, I'll try to compile the, the list of uh, the, the resources there. I'll put that in the description so it'll be easy for you to just go in there and have a look at it and uh, get started and get to meet new uh, new people and uh, seeing like um, maybe crypto and blockchain from like a different perspective. So uh, uh, once again, thanks for uh, thanks for joining uh, Julio. Thanks for your time. And uh, yeah, hopefully we uh, get to chat again. Thank you, Zubain. Take care. Thanks. Have a good one. Yeah.